the alphabet boys. This Shabbat, we shall take a careful look at the origins of what we call here in America the alphabet boys. Many of them claim they are the only ones with the truth, even though they all came up from under the kneecaps of the same leaders, as you shall see. We will once again deal with facts that break non-believers' backs, and we'll show you why. You see these out-of-control, wild Negroes on the street corners acting like damn fools, just as they are trained to do by our enemy Zion. You will see some of the false prophecies and damn lies that come off some of these Negroes' lips for yourselves. You will see how they put into bondage the slow and the weak-minded who pay heed to the false doctrine of rape and murder that some of these crazy Negroes scream before our enemies to keep Hebrew Israelites on the hate watch list next to the KKK and the white supremacists. Just as the Khazor handlers of some of these so-called leaders would have them do while under the government contract of a 5013C to keep any and all monies generated tax-free to line their pockets in payoffs in the forms of 10 and 20% tithes, free offerings, academy fees, soldier fees, fleecing fees, or whatever scheme these lovers of money can think of to deceive the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You will see that the branches of the alphabet boys come from the same tree. We will trace their origin from the beginning to leave no doubt as to what, who, and what we are dealing with. You will see why some of the leaders of these camps are likened to the scribes and Pharisees that Yeshua put in check. It applies to them to the letter. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23 and read verse 15. One verse. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. Yeshua warned the scribes and Pharisees, those hypocrites, this. And I'm going to warn these hypocrites in this hour of the warnings Yeshua put in the ears of those who would mistreat the lost sheep of the house of Israel in his day. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 15, Yeshua said this. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him two more the child of hell than yourselves. And some of them little Negro wildlings we see on them street corners that they demonstrating, they twofold more the child of hell foaming at the mouth, threatening rape and murder, cussing out elderly Hebrews, cussing our sisters out. They two more the child of hell than those who he was groomed at the kneecaps of. Indeed, Zion, the wild out of control Negroes, they post up on the street corners cussing our elderly brothers and sisters out. Talking about how they can't start to raping the daughters of Zion at 12 years old in the kingdom. Their lust for murdering. That straight out of Satan's playbook. This proves Yahushua correct. They are twofold more the child of hell. If there's anybody up in this room that understood and agreed with that, put 11 up in her. They have made those they got out there demonstrating not twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Told our continuing. They have made them twofold more the child of hell than those who taught and deceived them with this wickedness before the Most High Yah. This will be an in-depth, two-part study to show our enemies who allow some of these self-proclaimed prophets and high priests and want to be messiahs. That we don't play the kill by association game. That's why we're putting this out worldwide. Don't thrive on the remnant of the house of Israel. We ain't the Black Panthers. We know who we are. And we know the coin tail pro wicked and satanic as hell operations that you run upon our people. Get it straight, you human hyenas. It ain't gonna work on the true remnant of the house of Israel. Get it? Got it? Good. Now let's begin with a Negro who makes up the tree that all the branches of the alphabet boys come from. First, let's take a look at the chart. You know that one that y'all been requesting me like hell the past couple of weeks? I done sent out about 450 of them. But uh, over here in any meeting, you can just look at your screen and know the chart is right there. 
those of y'all in the other platforms, pull up that chart that you got on the alphabet, boys, and they're connecting them all. Now, if y'all was in any, any meeting, y'all would see a nice colorized, updated chart. Hallelujah. We got Hebrews with mad skills involved in this thing, y'all. Hallelujah. Continue. And of course, on the rebroadcast, y'all will see the chart that I'm referring to. Now, let's begin with the Negro who makes up the tree that all the branches of the alphabet boys come from. But first, let's take a look at the chart we all have, showing how the alphabet boys are interconnected and where the splits and divisions took place. And after taking a look at that chart, we are going to go back even further to the origins. Now, at the top of this chart, you see Abba Bivens, also called Eba Benjamin, who was a former member of the commandment keepers and started the Israelite school that spawned all the alphabet camps you see listed on this chart. But before we go forward, let's see who Abba Bivens learned from so we can understand the mindset of the so-called elders of these splintered camps who all come from the same tree. Now, for those of y'all up in the room, this is a 2015 hate intelligence report from our Khazor enemies at the Southern Poverty Law Center and how they portray us in their reports as being Hebrew Israelites. It's entitled the Hate Intelligence Report. Now, it's ironic, Zion, that the Southern Poverty Law Center is a Khazor operation who puts Hebrew Israelites on the hate watch list. And it's the Khazors who grant these Negroes, who talk of murdering and raping white folks, they grant these same Negroes 5013 Cs so they can get paid and are protected by these Khazars who allow them to operate openly. Who the hell do they think they fooling you Hebrews? They allow some of them to work for the Department of Homeland Security. Some of them or detectives in the New York Police Department. The very Negroes y'all see clowning are all under the protection of a 5013C hooked up with these alphabet boys. Let me continue. We read in an intelligence report. The Hebrew Israelite movement is rooted in black Judaism, a belief system birthed in the late 1800s by black Christians from the South Pentecostal holiness movement. They claim to have received a revelation. America's recently emancipated slaves were God's chosen people, the true Hebrews. The Hebrew Israelite movement is rooted in black Judaism, a belief system birthed in the late 1800s by black Christians from the South Pentecostal holy movements. According to black Judaism doctrine, when the kingdom of Israel was destroyed, the Israelites were first scattered across the African continent and then selectively targeted by enemy African tribes who captured and sold them to European slave traders for bondage in the New World. It's a quote from one of the leaders of one of the main alphabet camps out there, old General Yohanna. Quote, it's a common myth that slaves were randomly shackled up and carried off to slavery. General Yohanna, leader of the present-day Israelite school of universal practical knowledge, told the intelligence report. Actually, slave traders sailed for months and days to get to specific pickup points. They knew what people they were taking, specifically the lost tribes of Israel. Black Judaism leaders preach self-empowerment and economic independence, an early form of black nationalism that was foundational for later groups like the Nation of Islam. Their rhetoric, emphasizing the biblical theme of an oppressed nation being led to a promised land, informed black activists thought right up through the speeches of Martin Luther King Jr. Although followers of black Judaism thought of themselves as the descendants of the biblical 12 tribes of Israel, most did not take that to mean that other people deserve condemnation or attack. Listen how these Khazars and this intelligent report is putting this out to the world. One notable, notable exception was F.S. Cherry, a self-declared prophet who in 1886 started a black Jew church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where he preached that white people were inherently evil and hated by God. Cherry also instructed his followers that the earth is were and that Yeshua would return in the year 2000 to install blacks over whites through a race war. That sounds familiar, don't it? Continue. Just as today's racist Hebrew Israelite sex are hateful, but smaller detachments of a large non racist faith, Cherry, who, who relocated his congregation to Philadelphia in 1915, was far less popular in his time than non racist black Judaism founders like the Reverend William Christian and William Sanders Crowdy. After Cherry, the next major purveyor 
of racist dogma among black Jews was Eber ben Yonin, also known as Abba Bivens. That's the one at the top of the chart, you Hebrews. Who in the 60s broke away from the commandment keepers, then the dominant mainstream black Jewish organization, to launch his own extremist sect, which became known as the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Initially based in a Harlem apartment, this new black Israelite group soon moved to a building on New York City's 125th Street, Harlem's main drag. Three of Bivens' disciples, Ariah, Masha, and Yaqib, joined with four high priests named Chazak, Lahab, Yahya, and Shaw to take over leadership of the Israelite school. Collectively, they were referred to as the Seven Heads, the inner circle, governors of the black supremacist Hebrew-Israelite movement. Do you see how some Hebrews are classified in these intelligence reports out of the Southern Poverty Law Center ran by that kike Morris Dees? And right there to your right, you see a picture of Masha, who these Negroes claim was King David reincarnated walking around up in Harlem. And there go Ariah standing next to him. Let me read that last line again. Collectively, they were referred to as the seven heads, the inner circle governors of the black supremacist Hebrew-Israelite movement. You see them with them hexagrams on, correct? And remember, these are kikes who allow this to go down. Stamp their papers on a 5013Cs. Let's continue. Although, although they employed the same kind of radical rhetoric and confrontational street theater that other militant black groups of the 70s did, the racist Hebrew Israelites held themselves apart. They rejected the Muslim beliefs of, beliefs of groups like the Nation of Islam and refused to join with the pork-eating secularists of groups like the Black Panthers. In the 1980s, the Seven Heads changed the name of their group to the Israelite Church of Universal Practical Knowledge. The Israelite Church attempted to expand its visibility in the 1990s by declaring as F.S. Cherry had before them, that Yeshua HaMashiach would return to earth in 2000 to enslave and destroy the white race. Meanwhile, some members began to break away and form their own racist Hebrew Israelite sex. That's what a split up on the choice that you see. One such member, Yohanna, started a chapter and reclaimed the original name, Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge for his group. When the year 2000 came without the Israelite church prophecy coming to pass, its leaders rebranded the organization as the Israelite Church of God and Yeshua HaMashiach, the name they still use today. The organization was taken over in late 2000 by Chief High Priest Taza Ducky, born Jermaine Grant, who declared himself the Holy Spirit and the Comforter. Grant recently prophesied that a vengeful black Jesus would soon return to earth to kill or enslave all whites. Unlike Cherry, however, he didn't set a date. Now, Alba Bivens in the 1960s away from the, from the commandment keepers, who were the dominant and mainstream black Hebrews. So, then he's want to do a little research to find out who comes. Let's continue. Wentworth Arthur Matthew, born on June the 23rd, 1890, and died in December of 73. A West Indian immigrant in New York City was the founder in 1919 of the Commandment Keepers of the Living God, a black Hebrew congregation. It was influenced by the pan-Africanism and black nationalism of Marcus Garvey from Jamaica. Matthew developed his congregation along Jewish lines of observance. Let me put my glasses on so I can see this a little bit clearer. I don't want to miss a word. Matthew developed his congregation along Jewish lines of observance and the theory that they were returning to Judaism as the true Hebrews. He incorporated in 1930 and moved the congregation to Brooklyn. There he founded the Israelite Rabbinical Academy, teaching and ordaining African-American rabbis. His theory of black Hebrews was generally not accepted in that period by European-American Jews of the Orthodox and conservative communities. In other words, when Kite said, nigga, go sit down somewhere. But they allowed him to operate. They allowed him to incorporate. According to Matthew, he was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Other sources, including his own records, say he was born in St. Kitts, British West Indies. He and his family became naturalized United States citizens. In later years, Matthew sometimes said that he came from Lagos, Nigeria. But in his 1927 petition for naturalization, Matthew lists his place of birth as Schooner's Village, British West Indies. When he registered in 42 with the U.S. Elective Service during World War II, he listed his place of birth as St. Christopher, British West Indies. Matthew immigrated to New York City and arranged for his family to join him. In 1919, he founded the Commandment Keepers Congregation of the Living God in Harlem, a black Hebrew movement. 
it was strongly influenced by what the white Jews he had met. When he learned about the Veda Israel of Ethiopia, as them Danites who went back home in Operation Moses and Operation Solomon, when he found out about, about them, he began to identify with them. Matthew trained rabbis who set up synagogues throughout the United States and the Caribbean. When interviewed, many of the older members of this community recall memories of their parents observing Jewish dietary laws, such as abstaining from pork or salting their meat. Matthew and his congregation were also strongly influenced by the pan-African philosophy of Marcus Garvey from Jamaica and his black nationalist organization, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford composed the UNIA Universal Ethiopian Anthem and his hymnal. He also led the UNIA band and conducted his choir. Now, some of the people who still are up under the teachings of Wentworth Matthews is none other than Michelle Obama's cousin, Fune Capus. He came through Wentworth Matthews' organization. And now they claim that Negro is a highest ranking black Hebrew in America. We don't follow phony tapers, just like we didn't follow this cat out the West Indies who found out he was a Hebrew when he found out about them Danites over there in Ethiopia. But this is the Negro. And y'all pull up Wikipedia, because this is what I'm reading this out of. Pull up Wikipedia. And just put in there, Wentworth Arthur Matthew. I got one more line here. Uh, when this cat finally died... His son, because they had some fabulous holdings uh, on this page. That's Wentworth Matthew right there, holding up them candlesticks. That's the founder of the Commandment Keepers in 1919. This is who Abba Bivens hunted down, joined this organization, and learned at the kneecaps of. And in the 1960s, Abba Bivens, who's at the top of this chart, broke from the commandment keepers and started the Israelite school. If everybody is with me so far, put a 77 up in this room so we can really get started. Hallelujah. So we see here that Wentworth Matthew started the commandment keepers back in 1919. This is a key point in understanding how these alphabet camps have sprung up. Now let's go back to the alphabet chart and break it down that we might understand all of these camps are branches that came from the same tree. At the top is Abba Bivens, who broke away from the commandment keepers in the 1960s to launch his own sect, which became known as the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. He set up shop on 125th Street in Harlem, where he set up Masha, Yaki, look at, look at the chart that, while I'm reading you, Hebrews, familiarize yourself. He set up shop on 125th Street in Harlem, where he set up Masha, Yaki, Ariah, who was Yaqib's son, and Shaw as his disciples. It was in the mid-1980s, while they were all still together, that I began to call this camp up in Harlem. I asked them, brother, why in the hell they were dressed up like Bootsy Collins and Parliament Funkadelic and wearing satanic hexagrams? And couldn't none of them Negroes give Brother Jacob an answer? This was back in the mid-80s. Now in the mid-90s, Masha broke away from the ICUPK and formed the House of David, his own sect. Here is a picture of Masha, right there on the chart. And y'all saw previously, let me show it to you again, a picture of Masha and Aria standing together right there. Let me go back to the chart. Continuing. Now, a little later, you will hear two Hebrews who was with this organization for decades, who knows all of these brothers on this chart, and they will tell you why they began to split away from each other and start their own camps. Not Brother Jacob's words. I like to let them tell on themselves. Don't believe me. But you're going to begin to hear why they split away from each other and started their own camps, which has resulted in the alphabet camps that are overspread out here today. Now get this. Masha somehow convinced the people who followed him, because when he left ICUPK, half the people followed him and went on over to the house of David. But somehow, these Negroes got in their head over at the house of David that Masha was King David reincarnated in the flesh, walking around Harlem, New York. Nowhere in our Holy Bible does it teach us the man-made doctrine of reincarnation, you Israelites. What does the manuscript say? That reincarnation is as our French brothers would say over in France, impossible. Impossible. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, and let's read verses 24 through 28 with crystal clear clarity, this Shabbat, that all those who may not be with us live, who might hear this broadcast, might read this for the first time with their eyes wide open. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28, we read, 
Bahamasiak is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Yah for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as a high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. How can you get reincarnation in our holy manuscript when you read verse 27 with understanding Zion? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, not be King David way back then, then die and come back as Marsha running around up in Harlem, New York. That's a damnable lie. And reincarnation ain't nowhere in our manuscript. Verse 27 again. And as it, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Thomasiah was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You can't get around that. If there's anybody in this room that truly understood that reincarnation is impossible for the appointed for men to only die once and then in the judgment. If you got that understanding, put a hallelujah 1000 up in her before we go one step further. Put that to rest. Hallelujah. I see them thousands flying up in her. It's clearly written. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. I guess those brothers never read this scripture or they would have called Masha. For being a damn liar, claiming he was King David reincarnated. And believe it or not, you Hebrews, even though Masha is deader than Julius Caesar now, those who sat at the kneecaps of Masha in his house of David still believe he was King David reincarnated. But I know some of y'all don't believe that. Don't believe me. There are a lot of Israelite groups out there, but there's only one group that's teaching the truth according to the way the Most High wants it to be taught, and that's GMS. Like I said, we challenge anybody on the planet. I don't give a damn if you're a pope. I don't give a damn if you are uh, Rex Hobart. I don't give a damn if you are uh, 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 Jeff. I don't give a damn who you are. When it comes to the scriptures, we're the only ones that know the scriptures, all right? I told you, man, stop trying to find the truth yourself. Just come to Great Millstone. Whatever we say, we have the truth. Every. Greetings. Uh, in one of my uh, recent uh, videos, I uh, had some positive uh, words about uh, Rebel Alliance Media. As a result, I got a response uh, to that video in the form of a comment from Tahar, the leader of the notorious Great Millstone Group, writing under the name White Man is the Devil. Tahar asked, quote, how can you say anything positive about the Ram when those two apostates don't even believe in the Lord, end quote. The simple answer is that, you know, if I agree with someone, I'm going to say so, and if I disagree, I'm going to say so. However, Tahar's comment uh, has inspired me to make another video, you know, another positive video about Rebel Alliance Media. In this video, I'd like to congratulate them on uh, their constant pressure that they put on uh, Great Millstone uh, regarding their teaching that Masha is King David. So in this video, I'd like to briefly go through the history of that subject. Uh, in the 90s, the Israeli Church of Universal Practical Knowledge taught that a man named Moshe ben Kharim uh, and later Masha uh, was King David reincarnated, here to usher in the destruction of America and to retake the throne. Uh, this turned out to be a false prophecy as uh, Masha was thrown out of the Israeli Church of Universal Practical Knowledge during a split, and a short while later he died, nearly penniless and having been abandoned by most of his followers. Uh, but there was a small core of his followers who continued to believe that he was King David even after his death. Uh, most of those men, if not all of them, uh, are in the Great Millstone group today. So uh, consider some of these clips of uh, GMS members still saying that Masha is King David a decade after he died. All of a sudden, they made out everybody swear that Masha was King David, which is King David. I'm just going to come out and say it, man. Fuck it, okay? That's what I was talking about. for you brothers today. Uh, we're going to just go on to uh, show you a, a clip of, of some of our elders and the truth, uh, beginning with Masha. You know, and for those of you that can receive it, you know, that is King David. You know, yeah. don't really push that out too much because we know that brothers really can't handle that. Yeah, for those of you that can receive it. Right. For those of you that's on the level. Now, the gentlemen in Rebel Alliance Media started making videos demanding that GMS prove their claim that Masha is King David. This was a fair request when you consider that GMS always quotes First Thessalonians 5.21 to everyone else demanding that they, quote, prove all things, end quote. And the scripture says, prove all things. All right. Consider these clips of the gentlemen in Rebel Alliance Media pressing GMS over the course of several months on uh, the teaching that Masha is King David. Akadabi, we want to um, answer from Akadabi. So all of you listen, you can answer. We want to answer. We want, we want proof that Masha is King David. This is 2009. You still believe Masha is King David. This is 2000. Insane. You are mentally insane. And you, you guys, that make, you guys make no sense. You, you come at the side of the doctor because he's claiming he's over. But yet, all you guys subscribe to the ideology that Masha is King David. This is outrageous. We want to answer. Proof was Masha is King David. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to think? Right. Well, how is that a stupid question? That's what you teach. We 
actually have footage of you guys, you know, singing. Well, if you could receive it, if you could receive it, my shots can take it. So we're trying to, we're trying to save it. We're trying to at least receive an answer. Right. If you could receive some of that crap. If you can receive it, see what I mean? Like you understand, if you can't receive it. You know, you know, just, you know, just fundamental questions regarding the faith. You know, we want the evidence, we want the proof that my shot can take it. But we want some kind of scriptural evidence to prove to us how is my shot can take it. Now, having no proof, uh, the men in uh, GMS got frustrated and tried to threaten the men in Rebel Alliance Media. So consider this clip of uh, one of the threats, followed by footage of the men in the Rebel Alliance Media humorously responding to that threat by continuing to press their question. <laughs> said that just as the father revealed certain truths to Peter, so too the father revealed to him that uh, the Pope is the infallible leader of the church. Or can you imagine a member of the Israeli, uh, Israelite church of God and Jesus Christ saying just as you know, the father revealed certain truths to Peter, so too uh, he's revealed to him that uh, Tazadaki is the comforter? You know, GMS would never accept these kinds of, sort of uh, arguments. So you know, why should anyone believe them when they take this approach? The reality is that you know, this wasn't, the claim that Masha is King David wasn't revealed to them by the father or by the spirit or anything like that. You know, rather, they were forced to believe it in the 90s, and you can see them sort of admitting as much in the following clips. All of a sudden, they made everybody swear that Masha was King David. Okay, they always taught us, Arya, Shia, Baha, all of them guys always taught us, Masha was King David. And if you say, uh uh, differently, you can be a better. Arya himself was one of the first, taught us that, you know, a few years ago. Arya was the one who said, you know, Muhammad Baha was King David. Finally, uh, knowing that Great Millstone tries to keep their belief about Masha quiet, we should wonder if they have any other secret teachings. Uh, the rumor is that they believe that Tahar himself is the Apostle Paul reincarnated. With that in mind, I'm going to close with this interesting clip. Now, this was a short video that was put together by some cats that's banging with all them alphabet boys up there in New York, calling himself Ram. This was a short video put together showing to Hall, who left the house of David and helped form the great millstone, GMS, proclaiming that Masha is and was King David. And when he and his members were called on this lie, they couldn't prove it scripturally, but were reduced to saying their faith in this lying Negro makes them still believe he was and is King David reincarnated. Now I want y'all to notice that since all these different alphabets have split from each other, every single one of them claim that only their alphabet camp is teaching the truth. Only them, nobody else, just their camp. 
because you can't receive it. Did y'all hear that madness? No, unless you know me from Jericho. Ain't no right thinking Hebrew in his right mind gonna receive that. Who do them Negroes think they fooling with this? Then you heard the brother say, they made you squirt in Marshawn's key. And if you didn't squirt, he'll put you up out the camp. Our oh, arm twisted and intimidation tactics. And them Negroes won't never long just to something so bad. Oh, you go along with the program, didn't you? Psychopaths, provocateurs, agents. Yeah, right. Now, GMS goes after Jermaine Grant's fat line ass really hard up there in New York. Because Jermaine Grant is running around claiming to be the holy comforter. But these Negroes are still running around believing dead ass Masha was King David. Now they admit it in the end that it's blind faith they believe in this damn lie. And talking about Arya is John the Revelator. So, y'all see that picture of Arya right there on the charts? That's John the Revelator walking around. And he's still alive. <laughs> Negro, what? Another reincarnated, reincarnated Negro, huh? And you stupid ass Negroes believe this madness? Well, let me tell you, moron, something. The true remnant of Zion don't. Can your brother Jacob get a hallelujah 1,000 on that? If you don't believe none of this madness flying off these Negroes' lips, proclaiming to be King David reincarnated, and, and to hard night, he all of a sudden, he the Apostle Paul reincarnated. And old Aria, he's John the Revelator reincarnated. You Negroes need to be ashamed of yourself. Let me continue. Y'all are truly out of y'all minds and are giving Hebrew Israelites a bad name. You heard GMS say that Arya taught them that Masha was King David. And if you don't believe it, get to step it. No scriptural proof. Believe what I tell you to believe or get out. And now they think to hard as the Apostle Paul reincarnated. The same lustful Negro who says he and his boys at the GMS can't start the raping 12-year-old baby girls in the kingdom. Negroes, please. These different alphabet camps formed after the demise of their wannabe king, David Masha. Look at the chart. Up under Masha, the IUIC, Israel United in Christ, whose leader is none other than New York Police Department detective Bishop Nathaniel Free Case Ray. You see him standing there proudly looking at your Zion? He learned up under the kneecaps of the reincarnated King David Masha. He came up out the house of David and started the IUIC. Next to him, the great millstone is led by the wannabe reincarnated Paul, Tahor. And the house of Israel, the HOI, is led by another one who learned at the kneecaps of Masha, Zabak. You see all this is interconnecting you Hebrews? Continuing. All of them are getting dues, tithes, free will offerings, academy fees, soldier fees, and any other kinds of monies they can squeeze out of the deceived Hebrews who are members of their camps. And even though they all come out of Masha's house of David, all of them hate each other and stay at each other's throats. When Free Case Ray got clean busted setting up two Hebrews up there in New York, them other Negroes was posting YouTubes faster than you can blink, making mockery of that Negro. But lo and behold, they was all boys at one time, sitting up under Masha kneecaps. Continue. Detective Bishop Freecase Ray teaches his followers that Joseph and Mary committed fornication and that our holy Messiah was born through hot, lustful sex. Yet the good NYPD detective portrays his own image on t-shirts and coffee mugs as our Hamasiak and makes his stupid ass followers buy and sell the merchandise for more coins in his own pockets while keeping that government-issued 5013C in his back pocket so he don't have to pay a penny in taxes on any and all dollars, dollars that fall into the IUIC's hands. These Negroes learn to get paid from the government game. Well, from their master, Masha, the wannabe King David. And by the way, even with all their fiery hate rhetoric about the white man and their government, all of these alphabet camps show in the hell is getting the same government payout. They all have a 5013C in their back pockets too. So that all the money they hustle out of their deceived followers go straight into their pockets with no taxes paid. Now back to the chart. After Masha left ICUBK and took a lot of the, the followers with him, a whole lot of them left him and straight followed Masha to the house of David. Look at the chart. Yaqub. 
whose name is Peter Sharad, Yaqib, or Peter Sharad, and his son, Peter Jr., who's running around by the name of Arya and Shaw. Y'all see him up there next to my show, right up on the Abba on the chart. Yaqib, his son, Arya, and Shaw stayed together at the Israeli Church of Universal Practical Knowledge, the ICUPK. Arya and Shaw became the leaders of the ICUPK camp after Arya's daddy, Yaqib, was smoted with Alzheimer's. Now, it was at this time, a young up-and-coming nerd camp was assigned to be Yaqib's caretaker, almost watching over the elderly old man with Alzheimer's 24-7. This up-and-comer was ambitious and had his sights set to getting close to those he knew would help him rise up the ranks. This Negro's name is Jermaine Grant. When Ariel began prophesying that the Messiah would return on January the 1st, 2000 to kill and enslave all white people and showed himself to be a false prophet, Jermaine Grant, known as Tazaducky, y'all look at him in yellow right there on that chart. Old Tazaducky made his move and became the leader of the ICUPK and changed the name to the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ. And Tazaducky was declared to be the comforter, the Ruach Hokogesh in the flesh, y'all, the Holy Spirit in the form of a man. A big, fat belly, greasy man. Such lies. Continuing. The false wannabe prophet Auraria and old ass Shaw now sit, they now sit up under the kneecaps of the young up and comer with ambition who changed Auraria's daddy's depends and fed him warm soup when he lost his mind from Alzheimer's. There were those in his camp who knew damn well that Jermaine Grant's fat ass was in hardly no Yasin comforter but was a no-talent, wannabe rapper with a lust for white women's money and power. And so they left that camp and started their own camp. One who left, there he is on that right down the pitch in the red, old General Yohanna. He broke away from the ICGJC and created his own group, going back to the name of Abba Bibbins them, the ISUPK, or the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, while labeling himself a general. And get this. He claims he's third in command behind the almighty Abba Yah and Yahushua Hamasiach. In other words, even the archangels got to an answer to this Negro down here with these black bandanas on on this chart. Other madness, you Hebrews. Madness. Let me continue. What kind of weed is that Negro smoking on up there? How much do it cost? <laughs> Watch yourself, smart Yah. I got my eyes on you up there at Ohio, player. <laughs> now, another one who broke away from the IC, GJC, and Tyler Ducky, the wannabe comforter, is Raka Shayar. Y'all see Raka Shayar next to General Yohanna, who formed his own light and body church, and then created his Gathering of Christ Church, the GOCC, another alphabet camp. This is the Negro who seeks to instill fur into his followers, especially the sisters, with his lucrative flea doctrine. Give us 5,000, uh... We'll help you flee to Cairo, Egypt, or Ecuador in South America. And can y'all believe it? Some Hebrews have went for this con game and have been abandoned by these con men after being fleeced out of their money. Now, we will be going in depth on some of the crazy-ass man-made doctrines of these alphabet camps and how the leaders of these camps are turning naive and deceived Hebrews into twofold the child of hell than they are. But first, let me prove to you that all of these hustlers know each other and are indeed branches of the same tree. And better yet, I will prove it out of their own mouths, no less. But even though they are in a bitter struggle with each other, a bitter struggle with each other, all competing for more members to get tithes and money out of, all of these alphabet boys proclaiming that only their camp has the truth and you better follow them. Let me show you that they all have their government issued 5013C tax exemption and having the same competition that T.D. Snakes has with Cash Flow Dollar and Eddie Fong. Even though these Negroes cuss each other out and claim the other alphabet camps are frauds, let me show y'all the self-professed leader of the GMS, the great millstone, Old Taha. Let me show y'all what he said when he happened to run into old-ass false prophet Aria up there in New York recently. The video y'all about to see was put up on YouTube by Taha himself four weeks ago. Not four years ago. Less than four weeks ago. Shalom. Apostle Taha coming back at you.
you with some good news. I was uh, somewhere in uh, New York, I'll say, in Babylon, in hell. And I went to a uh, store to pick up something. And I noticed somebody. I, I, looked, I looked at his face and I said, I said, oh, shit, in my mind. I said, that's Ariel, high priest Ariel. So um, I said, um, I said, Ariel. And Ariel looked. And I said, oh, that's Ariel. Because he answered to his, to his name. And I said, um, I said, Shalom. I didn't want to give him no full salute. I just said, Shalom. And he said, Shalom to me. The last time I saw Ariel was in, uh, was 15 years ago. And this was right after the uh, World Trade Center that went down. It was a couple of weeks after that because we were speaking up there in Harlem. And um, I believe it was me, Apostle Dubois, and I believe it was uh, Apostle McCarr. And we were getting ready to go to camp. And um, we saw him. And we, you know, we pulled the car over and um, we went over there and we gave him a hug. We talked to him. And we talked about the, um, the World Trade Center. The uh, tower was going down. And, um, and the that was a Well, I saw him maybe a couple of months after that because they had set up a camp further down the block from where we spoke, spoke at, where we used to speak at, which was at the state building in Harlem. And um, when he would pass by with um, um, High Priest Shaw, you know, we would stop and, and, and salute him. And, you know, they would salute us and then they would go about their business, you know. So, I mean, this is good news to me. You know, it felt like I saw an actual angel of the Lord. And even though he's, um, you know, dealing with that madness with the, um, you know, Tazadakia, um, you know, in my heart, um, I, I truly believe he's a man of the Lord because all these, um, all these uh, the scriptures that all the people that came from one west, the main scriptural man was Ariel. Even though we had went a little beyond that and went into other scriptures that he never really went into, but he was a, he was a scripture man. He was a man that told you when the high holy days came in. He was a man to go to to learn the Hebrew to learn. We wouldn't be able to do the Sabbath service like the Passover Sabbath service. We did that based upon what uh, High Priest Ariya uh, taught us. All right. I also like to give a shout out to um uh, our priest or High Priest uh, Zabak because he said some good things about me. He said that uh, he said well you got the pioneers that go back for years and he mentioned my name and he mentioned uh, Nate. Um, I don't know if you mentioned um, uh, Yohanna, you know, General Yohanna, but he had mentioned my name, he had mentioned Nate, and pretty much in the same breath. So, like, even though we get on these guys, you know, we curse these guys out, the scriptures uh, tell you to rebuke them, man. But um, they're still Israelites, and when the kingdom is established, we're going to all come back together any damn way. That includes, you know, you know High Priest Yishai, High Priest Ahab, or High Priest Gazak. I'm calling them by, the, by the, the, the titles that they had back in the past, right? Whether they did wickedness or not, at the end of this thing, we're all coming back together anyway, man. But I was extremely happy to see Ariya, and I, I wanted to uh, take a selfie with him, but I said, nah, I'm not going to do that, man. I'm not even, if I said, Ariya, it's all right if I take a picture, I'm pretty sure he would have said, yeah, it's all right. But I, I, I wasn't going to do that, you know? Because that, you know, I, I, I didn't want to just disrespect the man. The fact that I know these scriptures, the fact that I gave these scriptures, these breakdowns to, to brothers that are under me, that goes back to um, Masha, Ariya, and Yaiqua, all right? And then you had other men that were under them that I was that I was taught by, too. You have Yeshaya, Lahab, Kazak. You know, I can't, I can't forget, I can't, I, I can't, I cannot, I cannot forget um, uh, uh, High Priest Shah, because he went into the history. So, um, you know, today is a, a, a beautiful day. Uh, today, by, by the way, today is, uh, what is this, March, uh, March 31st, 1st, 2016. Now, I was happy that I saw him because he was walking, he, didn't, he wasn't in a wheelchair, he, he's not walking with crutches. Of course, he's in his, um, he's got to be 75, going on 76. So he's, you know, up in age, he's not moving as, as fast or as strong as he was when I knew him back in the day, back in the, in the 80s and the 90s. But you can clearly see that, that, that that's Ariel, High Priest Ariel. He, by the way, he had the beard on his face. He had the beard on his face. Um, and like I said, I saw him again. What, what I did was I immediately called, um, I was going to call um, Apostle Gabor or Apostle Ramla. But when I went to the cell phone, the first number that popped up was uh, Apostle Ricard, so I just called him, right? So I'm saying, you ain't going to believe this. I ran into uh, High Priest Ariel. He said, oh, shit, I can't believe that, man. So I'm walking back, and um, I see Ariel again. So I said, I said, Shalom Ariel again. I said, Ariel, this, this, this individual want to say Shalom to you. So I you know, put it, gave him the phone, and um, he spoke to uh, Apostle uh, Ricard for a good 30 seconds, and he gave me the phone. I gave him another closing salute, and um, I, uh, um, you know, I, I said Shalom, and I, I went about my business. But this is a beautiful day. It tells you in Psalms uh, 33, uh, 133. Um, how beautiful for it is to, for brothers to dwell together in unity, and the unity is going to come back. You know, we, we fight amongst each other, but we're known for rebuking every goddamn body. We, hey, we rebuke guys in GMS. We rebuke each other. You know, you, you're not around when we have our, our arguments, man, among, these, among ourselves, man. You know, but, but you know, it's all it's all in love. But anyway, I'm going to sign off, and um, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, that, man. I appreciate how made my day. He had that humble spirit, you know. He knew it was me. He didn't say my name, but he knew it was me because when he saw me, his eyes got bright, and he said, oh, you look good. And I told him, you, you look good, too, you know. And anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom. Did y'all hear that? Taha runs into Ariya.
now in this video, we see the leader of GMS filming himself about a month ago, recounting his encounter with one of his old teachers, high priests, and one of the prophets, Aria, who is currently sitting under the kneecaps of Jermaine Grant, who calls himself the Comforter. Look at the chart. You see him next to Jermaine Grant? They dust this old boy off once a year. Put some of them Hebrew guards on him. Give him a silver cane and they try to bone out there to great applause uh, to the psycho fans who up under Fat Belly Jermaine Grant kneecaps at the moment. Shaw and Aria are under the control of the comforter up there in New York. Such madness. This Negro Tahar said he felt like he saw an angel of the Lord. Even though Aria is still with that madness, a child's a ducky. Tahar looked right into his camera and said he truly believes in his heart that the false prophet Aria is a man of the Lord. Because all of the alphabet camps, it came out of one west. The main scriptural man was none other than Aria, who he still got love for. But let me tell you, Israelites worldwide, it was this same Aria who made up that 12 tribe chart lie that all of these alphabet boys are still using to this day. He admits that the wannabe prophet and high priest of Aria was the one who taught them. Tahar then gave a shout out to the high priest Zabak. Of the house of Israel, look at the chart. Another alphabet camp that hatched out of these Negroes. He gave him a shout out because Zabak said some good things about him. And the pioneers up there in New York. Who the pioneers? Look at them four generals of Abba Bivens. Don't go to pioneers that he's talking about, y'all. Tie it all together, Zion. It's time for your eyes to be open. Tahar said Zabak mentioned his name and he mentioned Nate. Nate who? Look at the chart. None other than NYPD detective Nate Free Case Way. All three of these Negroes were up under the kneecaps of Masha, the wannabe King David, who these Negroes still think is the reincarnated King David. Jahar said he don't know if High Priest Zavik mentioned General Yohanna. And then this Negro fantasizes that once the kingdom is established, all these different self-titled High Priests from these different alphabet camps are going to come back together. He said whether they did wickedness or not. We all coming back together in the end. This Negro is telling another damn lie. These so-called wannabe prophets and high priests are pastors over camps, tithing 10% of their members' monies, just like pig meat eating Christian pastors like Cash Flow Dollar and TD Snakes. And just like them, they are destroying and scattering the sheep of the Most High Yah's pastors. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23 and read verses 1 through 16. Turn with me. We're going to Jeremiah, chapter 23. And we're going to read verses 1 through 16. The Most High warned those who passed us shepherds over his people. And he sent forth his prophet Jeremiah to put pen into paper and to write it in a book. We read, We you passed us that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith Yahweh. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith Yah, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, wherever I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I, not no alphabet camp, not no man, the most I say, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith Yahweh. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called, Yahweh our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yah, that they shall no more say, Yah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yah liveth, which brought it up, and which laid the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries, wherever I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome. Because of Yahweh, and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. 
people because of swearin the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophets and priests are profane. Ain't these Negroes running around calling themselves prophets and high priests? Does it apply if the shoe fits? Words. Verse 11 again. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yeah. In my house have I found their wickedness, saith Yaqua. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith Yaqua. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied and fall and caused my people Israel to err. I'm going to show y'all next week that this Negro rocker out of the GOCC teaches out of the satanic books that Solomon brought forth and still inferring those he can fleece money out of to flee like cowards. These scriptures is true, you Hebrews. That Negro teaching out their grimoires and it will be proven in part two next week. Let me continue. Verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith your of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, Judah, is profane is going forth into all the land. Thus saith your choir of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Most High Yah. If y'all agree with me that them scriptures hit them Negroes in their forehead like they got a bullseye on it, put a hallelujah 1000 up in here if you got some understanding from that. Hallelujah. Jehoah said, he was extremely happy to run into old-ass Arya and reminisce how he was taught the scriptures under Masha, the wannabe reincarnated King David, and under Arya and his daddy, Yaqib. And he also said he learned under High Priest Shaw. Now take a look at the chart again. Look at it. There they are, all four that he mentioned. Taha said that the splendid alphabet camps fight against each other, but they are all going to all come back together. He's right. If they don't repent of their wickedness, Lies and deceits, they will all meet back up in the lake with a snake. Now, at this point, all of you should be familiar with the leaders of the alphabet camps and how they all sprang from old Alba Bivens up there in New York. And the four men he appointed under him Masha, Yaqib, Yaqib's son, Ariah, and Shaw. Now, you are about to hear from two Hebrews who personally know these Negroes. And who will tell you out of their own mouths why they think all the splitting up started. How much of a joke they think Jermaine Grant is calling himself the comforter. They call that Negro comfy. And they will even give some insight to the man who started the commandment keepers. Old Whitworth Matthews. Who Abba Bivens learned at the kneecaps of before starting the Israelite school in New York. Back in the 60s. You Hebrews listen carefully. And follow along while looking at the charts that you have. So you will know exactly who they are spilling the beans on in this expose of the alphabet boys. Now the names of these two Hebrews y'all about to hear. Been up in them camps since 1989 in the early 90s. It's been decades up in there. One is named Isariah. And the other name is Akariah. And they are being interviewed just three weeks ago on a blog talk radio program by the same Hebrews who questioned to hard GMS on why they are still stuck on stupid claiming that Masha is the resurrected King David. But a precursor which y'all about to hear. Akaram and Azariah gonna come to the mic and start telling it all. These are two brothers that came to the ISUPK camp back in 89 and 93 and they gonna start in on Jermaine Grant's fat ass who they and Rebel, uh, Rebel Alliance Media moderator called Comfy because this line Negro calls himself the Comforter. They mention Uriah and Shaw and Yohanna and some of the leaders of the alphabet camps, the ones that you see right there on them charts. They discuss the false doctrines of tithes and mention Masha and Yaqub in the early 90s. They say they started out good up in that school, but bad elements came in from the streets and they were not teaching Yeshua HaMasiah. They will, you were out of their own mouths that Aria, the false prophet, loves money. And they had naive young Hebrews selling body oils for them. Negroes out on the street corner selling perfumes. 
and made servants out of them and started hustling Hebrews out of their money. They themselves would admit they worked the oil tables up in New York. The host says that Ariah is a nigger, the get over type, the kind of like hustling Hebrews. And they're again going to mention they're not teaching Yeshua HaMashiach. Tithes and body oil frequencies built up ISUPK. They introduced the tithe doctrine of 10%. And Jermaine Grant came to power, and he taxing his morons at 20% on the Tithes ledgers. They admit, out of their own mouths, that Ariyah's made up 12 tribe charters, not after it. And that Ariyah and his daddy, Akib, also known as Peter Sherrod, learned from Rabbi Wentworth Matthews. And that Rabbi Matthews, who started the commandment keepers, was into the Kabbalah, and claimed he could turn himself invisible. Is y'all ready for this? <laughs> Let me set it up. <laughs> Don't believe me. <laughs> Whew. I told you I was going to try to draw off these Nick Rebels. Hold on. <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing? Hey, 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 brother, now, I want to give you one of these real fast, brother. You know what I mean? I mean, I, mean, I, I heard a lot about you, you know, throughout the years. But, uh, you hear that, you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 they 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 room for you, brother. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, oh, I hear that. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Hey, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Hey, hey, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give you one too, brother. This is, I gotta draw you on the phone, man. From, from the old, from the old school, brother. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, Elvis? Ooh, I'm all right. Listen, uh, listen, not only from the old school, from the old and new school. But I was just left there in 20, uh, 2013, 2014, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, they wouldn't put you, bro. Uh, if you have, uh, 
certain elements, he has some bad elements that come from the streets. And first of all, it wasn't teaching Christ. If they were teaching Christ, a lot of these brothers end up leaving, or they, 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 uh, they would either bow to the word of Christ, or they wasn't teaching Christ. You know what I mean? They wasn't teaching Christ. They were just teaching the Bible bringing out certain information. So some element came in there, and what happened? Ari, I'm going to go straight up, right? Ari, I love money. So what happened? Ari, I yep. make a back seat, and all these brothers, they form certain programs. They try to use the Bible to justify certain things. They form certain programs. I, I used to work on all these man. And these brothers, you were a press brother. And to tell you straight up, man, you know, I, mean, I don't want to make a lot of little short. They, 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 took, they used to take money from brothers. They used to use brothers, credit cards. I'm only going to make a little short. You don't talk to me. This is in your face. All over the place. We're online. You're listening to the pop. No, no, you don't know that. Well, well, let, no, you don't know that. Let me, let me interject, let me interject a little bit. Um, there's so much history to cover that I think the best way to um, start it off is for the brother to ask questions on that. You know, if you have, like, if you have specific questions on certain aspects of this, um, one of them. Well, 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 I, I wanted to give, I wanted to give your brother the floor. You know what I mean? To, to go over what you think so far. You know, because I know you've been paying attention to what's been going on. You know, on, on the West. You know what I mean? So I know you, you know where, where people have missed out and they've been all misinformed on. So I want you to take straw there. But um, you know, I did have, I did have, um, I did hear you say something. You said Mo. So that was you referring to uh, Marshall, right? You said Mo was cool. Yeah, yeah, Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Yeah. 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 You know, brother. You know, brother. You see what happened? What happened? Right? Something bad. Bro. If what happened? If you have, uh, if you have a bird, if you have uh, certain elements, you have some bad elements that come from the street. And first of all, it wasn't teaching Christ. If they were teaching Christ, like a lot of these brothers end up leaving, or they they they, uh, they would even bow to the word of Christ, or they wasn't teaching Christ. You know what I mean? They wasn't teaching Christ. They were just teaching Bible bringing out certain information. So some element came in there. And what happened? Ari, I want to tell you straight up, right? Ari, uh, love money. So what happened? Ari, I yeah. back seat, and all these brothers. They form certain programs. They try to use the Bible to justify certain things. They form certain programs. I, I used to work on all tables, man. And these brothers used to oppress brothers. And to tell it straight up, man, you know, I, mean, I don't want to make a lot of good short. They, 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 took, they used to take money from brothers. They used to use brothers credit cards. I'm only going to make a little short. I don't mean to interject, but like, we got two hours, so, you know what I mean? So just, just, just be as long as you want, brother. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So what happened to the brother? I mean, the brother, they come to the brother, they were asking the brother, so, you know what I mean? So donate money. The brother donate, uh, give me credit card. Eh? And um, ten thousand dollars, and they told brother, and all they did was start boom. They were gonna give back brother money. Um, they didn't give back brother money. I know another brother that gave about five thousand dollars for all the people. So the all the people was 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 built on brother own income. And these brother, the other one, that brother, that brother, <laughs> he, he was freak. You know, on the surface, you know, the scripture, but on the, on another level, he was a spiritual. So what happened now? How we have to take a back right and allow this element? You know what I mean? When you put all these elements together, you know that's bad news. So you're saying that so, he was a bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, was, he, was, he was a nigga. That's what he was, man. Yeah. What? You want to be a nigga? I'm going to point that out. You know, for the listeners, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, no tolerance for that. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know, I know where he's going to head at because, you know, he had a key, key talk, 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 key but these elements take root because certain brothers were getting money, they were with being weak, so they kind of set back. So they come to Saturday and teach them in class. Because Ariel was in teacher, he came and teach them in class. I mean, these brothers would be in their face. It was a pressing brother. Whenever they call it Saturday, he had to go on the table and he had to work and give them for free. I used to work on the table, I used to work on the hard table, and they used the scriptures to justify that you did it for Christ, huh? And when, when something happens, they say, suffer up for these brothers, you did it for Christ. When you did it for another man, when you did it for these brothers, you made these brothers pocket it back. I mean, because right when he was driving behind you, not from his own income, from the brother's sweat and blood working in the hard table. You know what I mean? Wow. So what happened now? So what happened now? So, so, oh, oh, can, 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 can I say something? Can, can I say something? Yeah. I, I want to speak for the viewers as well, um, for the listeners. So you're saying that the, the Hebrew Israel, the, the, the great one west, the great ISUPK one west was built on on body odor fragrance? No, it was more than that. It was more than that. It, it, it was more than that. was part of it, though. But it was more than that. It was way more than that because they are... Um, <laughs> Yeah, they um they implemented the types the types um between Lahab and Masha and Ariel co-signed it, Shah co-signed it, Yeshaya co-signed it, all of them co-signed it, and um they implemented the type the type doctrine. And back then it was ten percent, it wasn't twenty percent. Right. Jermaine right, was right. the one, uh, you know, Comfy's the one that brought in that twenty percent lie. Um, right. but, but, but we'll we'll I'll digress from that and go a little deeper um from what piggyback on what the party was bringing in. Okay, the whole this was a movement. Okay. Uh, Years ago, long time, way before Ariel. Okay, Ariel was not the first one to bring out the Israelite doctrine or the Israelite teaching according to the Bible. He was not the first one. 
Um, a matter of fact, the, the 12 tribes break down and everyone says it's so spiritual and he got it from the heavens and all that. That's not even accurate. It's not even biblically accurate, okay? The only thing you can say is that with Israelites, you can't specify where each tribe is from only because the scriptures say Israel is scattered to the four winds of the earth. Four corners of the earth. So you, Israelites is all over, so you can't specify. So who are the ones in Iraq, for example? What tribe are the ones in China? What tribe are the ones in India then? You're supposed to be able to specify that. Okay. Anyway. So the Israelite movement was going on way, way back. I'll go back to the 1900s, early, late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, many people listening will know, familiar with a man named Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey knew he was an Israelite, but he was on, he was more on the economic building, the economic foundation for black people. And he didn't want to take black people back to Africa. What he wanted to do was get involved in trade and commerce. Okay, and then he messed up when they jipped him and sold him some ships with some holes in it. And that's where he lost all his money. And eventually, um, you know, they, they killed him eventually. But... I'll make a long story short, Marcus Garvey had over 3 million members. 3 million members that paid dues. So he was the biggest movement back then, okay? You had the Israelite movement that sparked off of, that was going on. You had the uh, Moorish Science Temple movement that was going on. Out of the Moorish Science Temple, Islam, the nation of Islam, uh, spawned off of the Moorish Science Temple. Okay? So uh, you had a man named Noble Drew Ali who was a Moorish Science. He, he, he had just like that. He had a bunch yeah, of women yeah, he was rich. Yeah, he, was, he was taking yeah, he was the money from the organization. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, he's acting just, he acted just like Jermaine acting now. So anyway, the Israelite movement, the Israelite movement eventually got infiltrated. Um, you know, the Rothschild and them infiltrated that and got it dispersed and then it branched off into Islam, the Israelite movement, and the Moorish science. And which, you know, that Islam is the most popular one now. That's the most popular one. So this was going on way before Ariad, way before Ariad. Well, Ariad grew up in it. So he grew up right. during the 19, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. So he's seen a lot. And um, right. him and his father, Yaikwab, you know, um, learned from a man named Rabbi Matthews, a black man. Oh, Rabbi oh, Matthews. Wisdom. Yeah, okay, wisdom. so Rabbi Matthews taught Abba Vivitz. I'm sure you've heard right. that name mentioned. Okay, right. um, right. Rabbi Matthews. That's a lot of the right? Yeah, so called. Yeah, so called. So, yeah, I know, I know. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay, okay. Matthews, yeah. Matthews, was, uh, Matthews was heavy into the Kabbalah. Okay, the Kabbalah goes into the mysticism of. Uh, you know, right. Interpretation, yeah. So he was into that. He even claimed that he could turn himself invisible. So the guy was basically into yeah, this crap. Yeah. Matthews. Yeah. All right. If you, yeah. you know anyone who's, who's listening can go and research Matthews and find out his history. His building actually is right across the street from 1941 Madison Avenue. They just recently sold that building. It was a mansion, and he had his organization. When he died, his son and a deacon that was set up were feuding over that money and that building and all that. And that eventually fell apart. So uh, Bivens, Bivens, Aria, Yaikwaz. And then later on, Mo, Mashar came in. Okay, so they're like the, the four main ones that started that whole thing. And it was very grassroots. Very right. grassroots. It was, it was, it was basic, okay? Because you had a lot of other Israelite groups out there. You had the commandment keepers. You had uh, groups in Chicago. You had a, a lot of other Israelite groups. So One West was not right. the only exclusive Israelite group. And that's the misconception yeah. that even to this day, people feel that One West was the only group that the original. No, they're not the original. You know, right. um, all right, so speed it up now, Kopari's time when he came in 1989. A came in before me. I came in in 1993 into the organization. Um, in 1989, 1993, when I came in, it was still very grassroots, but it was growing. You know, brothers was coming in, sisters yeah. was coming in, because that knowledge at the time was so fascinating. No one had ever right. heard the Bible broken down like that. And then to be able to go and read it for yourself and to find out that, wow, all this is in the Bible. Me personally, when I saw, because I had always heard about the 144,000, but when I saw it in the Bible in Revelation, I said, man, no, this has got to be it. This is it. This is the knowledge. Right. Right. So I, I went in wholeheartedly and ran with it. And like a brother said, um, like brother Parham said, listen, it started out positive, man. It was positive. It, 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 was, it wasn't built on Christ, but at the time when we was in there, everything so seemed so, positive, so positive. Everything seemed yeah. like it was going to move forward, like this was going to be a revolution for, for black, right. blacks and Hispanics. This was going to be a new awakening. This was our time. And, and right. until that element came in where, you know, the Bible don't lie. It says the love of money. A lot of people misquote that scripture. Right, right. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Right. So because men loved money more mm -hmm. than the right. truth of God, it got mm -hmm. corrupted. Okay, it got corrupted. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you, brother, and you're listening. If, they, if those men, those so-called elders and pioneers, okay, had stayed on the positive side of this thing and had really right. cared about their people and cared about their community and was willing to give back to Harlem and give back to New York City and, and do something for their people, this thing would be unstoppable right now. Right. But see, the love of money, the love of money, they allowed that element to creep in. You know, like it says, certain men crept in unawares. They allowed that to creep in. The brother Yashawan that Abari was talking about now, um, I'll fill in the gap with that. He, he came straight out of jail. Nigga was a drug dealer. Came straight out of jail and learned the scriptures enough that he could use the scriptures and manipulate people. And, and I mean, look, the guy was very charismatic, okay? The guy could talk, man. And right. he went out there on street speaking. See, me and Abari, we from the old days when the street speaking, we would get in fights and get arrested and get all kind of stuff, man. So it was tough back then. And them dudes was rough on the street. Ariel was no joke on the street. 
I'm gonna mention all of them. Taha, he wasn't no joke on the street. Taha, uh, what, what's your name? Yahana? Yahana talk. Yahana talk. Yahana talk. You're shy in them. They was, they was rough, man. So, hey, 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 check, 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 check it out, check it out, man. It's fucking life, man. Talk, man. I'm not gonna let that pass by, man, because we understand the truth, man, that these people in my groups, yes, it's best it's based on positivity, but yet somebody's mm-hmm. ego comes in the way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Somebody's mm-hmm. personal feelings come in the way. So, let, so, let, so, you know, since this niggas is about putting niggas down, let's put niggas down right now. I, I want you to repeat that again, because, I, I, you know, I, I, you know let, 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 no, let's just say, check it out, man. Let, let the people know that there's a whole lot of listeners right now, man. You don't know who's right, man. Niggas probably get mad and all that. All kind of, oh, that's man, all right. Man, man, all kind of Satan going on. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But listen, man, repeat it again. Yeah, Yahana taught the God to say comfort him. The topic. Yeah, man, comfort Yeah. You know what? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And right, right. let me talk about the name change. The name change. First it was IFUPK, right? Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. That was chartered under um, Yaikwa and, and Aria in the beginning. Um, sure. That name, and I know this personally because at the time, uh, my ex-wife now, she was an accountant and she was able to look at the books in the church and she, she let me know, listen, they're, they're cooking the books, okay? They got two sets of books, all right? Yeah, they did. They got two, two sets of books, okay? So um, what happened was they got into some IRS trouble, okay? So that's when Jermaine came in and started his influence and started his takeover, which was a coup. A coup they want to call it. And, um, and they changed the name to uh, the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ. But your honor, check the original name. Yeah. I'm getting the echo. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out right now. I'm going on. I'm going on. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever we made, 
you had to get that in, and you got 10% of that. So if you only made $40 because it was snowing like hell and rain and cold as hell, and you went out anyway because it was mandatory, guess what? You was going to get paid $4 that day. Wow. Right? And that's how with us guys was with that, man. Um, and Tyler, Tyler back to work the oil tables when he would show up, whenever he would show up. He worked it. Because I worked with him before on those oil tables. We, uh, we used to go out in cruise like units so it would be like two guys going out to one spot some would go to Brooklyn some would go to Third Avenue uh, up in the Bronx some would go to Manhattan you know Times Square whatever and me him and another brother went to Third Avenue one time I remember that and he, he worked on the tables too uh, but he wasn't out there every day like me in a bar he wasn't out there like that yeah I am so um, and how he escaped a lot of shit you know be keeping real how that nigga escaped a lot of work he, uh, guy boss started to get old and started to grow ill. You know, he, um, he eventually developed Alzheimer's, right? So, what right. happened was, um, Jermaine, Tyler Dockett, another brother named Shabar, and Rocka Cut, you remember Rocka Cut? And, and Noah, Rocka, Rocka, yeah. Noah, they were assigned to, uh, take care of Guy Quad, watch him 24 hours a day, round the clock. You know, like caretakers. And, um, and Tyler Dockett did that for a long time. He did that for a very long time. Um, until his rise, uh, the power, which began with the junior council, which I'm going to bring you up to a segue that Aparium is going to speak on, which is a true story. Um, so anyway, uh, he rose up to power with his junior council crew, him and Kakum, and Kakumban, to Zappawan, um, a lot, a couple other brothers was on junior council part. I don't remember who was, by this time, Yahana had left, Masadam had split off, Yahana left, Tahar had left, um, so they're like separate stories. Aparium could go into the history of them and how they really was, um, back then. So anyway, um, one night there was a council with junior council, and uh, Aparium, a brother named Barabban, and a brother named Mata, you know, good brothers, man. And they, they, they were the ones that I knew that stood up to Tazadak. You know, when he would go on with his madness and his ranting and raving and uh, throwing his rank around and, you know, giving brothers orders and, and the orders that he wouldn't do himself, um, you know, these were the brothers that would stand up to him. So uh, I was uh, over security at the time, and these brothers were in a council with him, Shaw and Arya. So go ahead, Aparium. What happened in that council? Yeah, so we were there, we were there, because what happened is, uh, the Prime Director told Arya and the elders that if, they don't, if, they, if he and the Junior Council are on the same rank as them, you know what I mean, uh, they're going to take the congregation and leave, you see? So what happened, Prime Director told the elders that he want to be a prophet chief high priest. So I went, I went to the council, me and Martin brought one, they called us the council, and we was in there from about 8 o'clock to about 4 o'clock in the morning. And um, I said, yo, I ain't going to call you guys on prophet chief high priest, because the only high priest I know in the Bible is the outside right? You guys are supposed to be guided. So what happened? He put out the Book of Mormon. You see how he justifies the doctrine of the uh, 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 Apostle Chief High Priest? The different titles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put out the Book of Mormon. Yeah, you put out the Book of Mormon. Mormon. And he said, yeah, yeah, you see, you see, you see, um, uh, we can have a lot of high priests on the Mephitic the Order, right? So Shaw was saying, uh, he, the, the, the brother is right, you know, the brother is right, the brother is right. I'm just saying for about Shaw, right? Shaw, 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 so he was trying to talk about it, come on, come on, he's, 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 he's working out of that So he, uh, we were in there and waiting for a bit, but hey, that was, you see, what they do, what they do, they beat you down, they have you up here and they beat you down, they fix it because they don't, they have a lot of time on their hands because they don't work, they leave all the congregation. So what they do, they have you in this council and beat you down, and if you're not spiritually strong and don't know the scripture, you, you, you give in. So anyway, we were there, man, from about 8 o'clock in the night to about 4 o'clock in the morning, so I said, yo, man, we have to leave. So he was trying to convince him to stay. So... Me, Brock, and the monster, I said, we're going to leave, man, we're going to leave, because he came here, we're going to leave. But we were, we were supposed to go back to the council the following week. So right. someone called me and told me that I can't come back, because I don't want to accept that I've got the eyes, no, I'll pop five weeks. But, you see, what happened, they, they, they have you so brainwashing, people fear on you, and they, they use a fear tactic, and they use pick around the scripture, and they beat you down with the scripture, and because you're sincere within yourself, you know what I mean, you have a lot of brothers that give in. So when I left, man, I was going through like a withdrawal, uh, like a withdrawal, you know when you're on drugs, when people on drugs and they're going through a withdrawal, I was going through that, man, and I said, damn, man, I have no one, no one to turn to, no one to turn to, and, yo, I prayed to the most high, man, I prayed to the most high, and I went inside the scripture, inside the study of the scripture, and one thing I have to tell brothers and sisters, man, the Bible warn you, right through the Bible, the Bible warn you, don't let no man deceive you. I come to the realization, through my experience, when I study the scripture, that you have to ask the most high to forgive you to allow men to deceive you, man. Because mm -hmm. you can be deceived for a certain time. Anyone is open to the deception. And you can be deceived for a certain amount of time, but when you realize that deception, they're deceiving you, you're supposed to back out of it and ask the most high. Because you see, a lot of brothers in self denial. They try to be this person, this person, but you have to blame yourself because they didn't put a gun to your head and tell you to come here. I, I, I was watching, um, uh, I was watching on one of the video, video, I think he put a video up here when the time that they were interviewing a brother and he would say, yeah, hey, I didn't put a gun to you, you come on your home. So that's not my responsibility. So he's right. And most guys are going to do but what I'm saying is that a brother 
strike the most high for uh, for, for, for forgiving for doing for doing the thief. Because the Bible also the Bible says that don't don't make no man deceive you. Don't make no man deceive you with any philosophy and high your words. The Bible warns you about that. So you keep the blame on the Bible. You put the blame on yourself because you allow yourself to be to be deceived. But a lot of men don't want to say they want to blame another uh, blame on other people. And you yourself deny. That's why I see a lot of brothers have a lot of hangriness. I, I have to overcome that, man. I have to go to my spirit and study and overcome that, man. That's why I can speak holy and know these guys are false. Aria, I'm going to say that. Aria, we'll say the beginning, but Aria, you didn't take the qualification of a helder. He wasn't a pastor. He wasn't no prophet. Because the prophet don't prophesy about the, uh, he, he said that he prophesied Christ come back in 2000. Like, he used to be on 34 feet, diligently. He now allowed. How about what God goes so far as to say, listen, if Christ don't come back for the year 2000, and if you see me out here, I'll never come back. Man, and we have a cop right over, he can hide his arm, we have a cop right out in front of the streets, in front of us. And they were sticking down, they were sticking yeah. down. And we were out there, you know, man, yeah. we were diligent in it, man, we were diligent in it out there. Why did you come back? You see, they put that thing in a uh, lot of brothers' mind and mess up a lot of brothers. A lot of brothers don't go to school, a lot of brothers, you know what I mean, uh, mess up their credit. A lot of brothers get messed up to that boy's back in the practical school. You know what happened that night? I hear that the practical school. A brother was saying that the practical school, the brother is in the practical school. Because there was a lot of Israelites in the practical school in, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I hear that night before he used to tell us. That night, the brothers, they go on the roof, they give away all their money, all their clothes, and go on the roof, brother, waiting for the Christ to come pick them up. That's how these brothers mess with people's life, man. You mess with people's life, you mess with people's family. When you see survivors, they sit around and they see people, man. They mess with people's life, man. And a lot of these brothers, they're going right back in the world, man, because of their lives. As far as doctrine, what are your people of Christ is coming for in 2000? I didn't believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Old Holly, brother, because I was out there. I was, I was in the school between uh, 108 and 1941, my manager, for 30 years. Wow. And uh, I started the witness. I went, I went, yo, man, you, you know what happened? Sometimes when you are truly loyal, it can be, it can mess you up. Because that was loyal to these men. You can talk nothing about one way. There was bullshit going on. And when people come and say, listen, man, I see this, blah, 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 blah. You believe that? No, no, that's not true. Because you're loyal to these brothers. You were loyal to Christ. You were loyal to these men. I mean, we have to say, that's long enough. I suppose you're loyal to Christ. Not to these men. Let me, if I could piggyback on what you're saying now. Yeah. Okay, you were talking focus on... Yeah, let me focus on Ariya now, because Ariya taught all these things, okay? He taught us to, you know, to certain things. He taught us. Yeah, he was a major teacher. And, and let me go down the list. He taught he taught all them so-called elders, um, you know, Lahab, uh, Kazak, Isaiah, um, Yahana, uh, Tahar, Kazakia. Okay, all these guys Ariya taught. So these guys are basing, basing their teachings off of what Ariya has taught them. Okay, so if you look at um, Tahar's loyalty, Tahar is still loyal to Ariya. He's still, they still got love. <laughs> yeah, they still got love the other day. Yeah, they, they got love for him, and um, they have a lot of respect for him, you know, um, and which... On the surface, let me go deep with this now. On the surface, you would think that, you know what, he's an elder, he deserves that respect, and he deserves to be honored, double honor. Um, he is like I saw an angel from heaven. No, <laughs> no, no, that's not an angel from heaven because Ariya is not an angel from heaven. He's wrong. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. Let's look at the pattern now. First, Ariya used to teach about Abba Bibbis. He used to yeah. uh, make him into a demigod almost, like as if he was John the Baptist. There's no guarantee that he's John the Baptist, okay? We don't know that. All right, we don't know that whole concept of reincarnation. The word reincarnation is not in the Bible nowhere. It's nowhere. The concept wow. of reincarnation, um, only the Most High knows what spirit he can bring back and what he won't bring back. God has control of that. We don't have no control and no knowledge of who, how, when, and why God brings spirits back or don't bring them back. We don't, we, don't, we don't know that. So that whole concept of reincarnation, they use a scripture that says the regeneration, bringing back a, an entire generation. That's not the definition of that word, regeneration. And R-E is not a prefix. Okay, I want everybody to understand this that's listening. The word regeneration means a reinstatement or renewing. Okay, and Christ was talking about the renewing of and the reinstatement of Israel and the kingdom. That's what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about reincarnating a whole generation and bringing them back. That's a, that's a wrong teaching. That's number one. Wrong teaching of Ariel. Another wrong teaching, the year 2000. Another wrong teaching, the 12 tribes break down, trying to describe who is who and who is what. All right? Now, the second person that Ariel pushed in my time that I was there, that he pushed as a, as a demigod, um, right. Masha. He made us all stand up and, and hold up our hands and swear and say, we all pledge allegiance to the king of Israel. That right there was wow. madness, total madness, okay? And you were there, and you were there. I know you were there, you were there. I was there, I was there, I was there. I had to hold up, well, I thought that, listen, I was so loyal, like the brother of fire mentioned loyalty, I was so loyal to that, that I said, man, I don't want to get put out of this, I'm going to stand up. <laughs> I'm going to king, okay, all right, I'll, I'll deal with that. Uh, you know, another thing, and so the, the concept of reincarnation was put on this man, uh, Masha, Harvey, what's the name of my father, Harvey Harris? What was his name, Harvey? Something, anyway, I forgot his English. Harvey. 
no homo right now, you know what I'm saying, and just, and just let, 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 let niggas know, you know, about, about nature, a, a, a lot of people, a lot of people don't be listening to this, you know, niggas mm-hmm. followers, Johannes followers, you know, some right. teriyaki sauce followers, you know, GOCT right. followers, let, yeah, yeah, let, let everybody know where all these dudes come from, I, I want people's egos to be shattered tonight, you know what I'm saying, this is a big event, this is a big event. Yes, that's right. We got Isaiah. We got Isaiah. We got Isaiah and Aquarium on the phone. Yes, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Praise, praise the most. Of I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna mock y'all brothers. Yes, that's right. But I do. Yes, that's right. But listen, but listen. I, I just, I just want, I just want people to know because on the rebroadcast, because there's a lot of callers right now. No one seems to want to um, you know, you know, call in. I see seven one eight. I see, I see one one one. I see uh, right. um, I see three o five. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you're, you're kind of, come on, man. But anyway, we answer any question. Did anyone call me? We answer any question. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Farm. We will answer. Listen, we are not scared to answer no question. Let, let me say this, brother. If I could just say this real quick. Listen, listen. Right. we will right. answer any question that anyone has, number one. Number two, we challenge any of these so-called elders that have their different camps or whatever. We can go down the whole list of all of them. We know all of them. We know Nate. We know Barack and Banyamian out there. We, we, we know Mashaba and them. We know Ari, Ariella. Ariella's dead now. He passed away. Yeah, he passed away. We, know, we, we know Lahab. We know Yeshaya. We know, definitely know Tazadaki, Ari, and Shah. We know all of them. Listen, we know all of you. Yahana, Taha, we know all of you. And the problem, the reason why we really wanted to do this was to, listen, it's all right if you're teaching the Bible and teaching Christ and teaching Israelites, but don't take advantage of your people, man. Don't threaten yeah, them. Yeah, so don't, 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 do don't pay tithes. Yeah. Don't threaten yeah. them that if they don't, don't pay do tithes to you, right. that they're taking away from the nation. Don't threaten right. them that if they don't pay their tithes, Christ won't kill them. Don't threaten yeah. them and say that if you don't pay your 20% tithes, you're going to go to hell. Don't take advantage of your people and stop with these false, funny doctrines that y'all are teaching, man. Some of them out there are teaching that uh, angels had uh, sex with men and men. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of them are teaching them Dr. Young, Dr. Lizard people and, and all this stuff. Uh, no, one man no. is saying that he's the third in command on the Christ. There is no third in command on the Christ. That's not in the Bible. So, but these guys, I want to see these brothers know better. I'm telling you, these brothers, all these brothers know better, man. All these brothers know better. Is that damn money? Is that money? Is that money? All these brothers know better, man. I'm going to give you something. Hold on. Let me, let me finish my point. I'm going to give it to your point. I'm going to pass you the baton. Let me tell you something. If you're going to talk, any one of you elders out there, if you're going to talk and teach the Bible, do it the right way, okay? Don't manipulate it. Don't twist it. Don't use it to control people. You're supposed to be a guide to Israelites. You ain't supposed to be looked up to as a demigod and an idol. You're not supposed to be worshipped, okay? You, you're not supposed to be even put yourself in a position where you can be worshipped, okay? And that's, wow. what, that's what all of y'all are doing. All of y'all are doing that, and y'all need to repent for that, okay? Hey, so I know you, I know you. I first of all, I want to go down the list. This is epic right now. I really hope people call in. I don't understand why all these callers. I, I see no indication that anybody. They're in shock. They're, they're in shock. They're in shock. They're in because shock. because, because they're it lets you. Shock. You know what I'm saying? Because it lets you know when someone wants to call in. Like how the other brother called in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like no, no one wants to call in. I don't understand. And I don't understand why they're saying. Because they can't even say. We talking the truth. They can't even run what we say. Because I was there. I was there for church years. I was there for 13 years, and I believe in these brothers. I believe in these brothers. I believe in Aria. Yo, I put my life on the line. You have brothers that put their life on the line, brother. You have brothers that put their life on the line for these men, and these men turn it back on them. I remember, I'm going to say something quick, right? I don't remember when um, Marshall died. You know how I know that Aria is perfect, man? I'm going to show you straight up, man. I don't care if brother want to get mad and say, brother, what you saying is not right. Yeah, I'll answer you. When Marshall died, right? Marshall I was still, Marshall, Marshall died, right? I was still at 1941 with Madison. I think it was 1996 Marshall died, I think so. 96 or 97, I'm sorry. Um... I'm not um, quite sure, right? Yeah, time. Oh, but yeah, when the man died, man, I say, I say, I say, I say, Ari, I want to go to the funeral. You know what Ari, I look at me and say, no, you're not going to go. So you know what that's on my mind? I say, listen, the first come to me and say, this man was with Ari for 30 years. All he's with Ari, and because he has some disagreement, he said I can't go to the man's funeral. And none of us from 1941, that is, went to Marshall, you know. And Marshall was yeah, a cool brother, man. He was a cool brother. That's why I know Ari, oh, I wow. didn't care about people. That's why I know Ari, I didn't care about brothers. That's why I know we we worked in one of Marshall's business together. Yeah, we were working. We were, yeah. we, we, yeah, we were, um, we were process servers, man. Yeah, process yeah, servers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah we, 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 we helped start that business, man. And you had a family uh, brother that was over here. Yeah. But um, the know, thing yeah. is, that business was making money, and yeah. uh, when we worked at, there for Marshall, he couldn't pay us much, but you know, yeah, 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 way yeah. more than anything else that was going yeah. on in, 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 in that organization. And right. a lot of people was jealous of us that we was working there for him, and that we were so close. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out with school, man. He just got caught up. He just got caught up in that. He didn't even think. He just got caught up in that. I got to expose. Like the brother said, we got to light them up. Listen, I got to expose my shop. Okay? My shop wasn't no damn King David, first of all. Number two, the nigga was using the church money to send all his grandkids to private school. Okay? okay? His son was a jailbird. His son was in jail. Uh, you know, stone cold criminal. And dude was living large. Okay? Sending his grandkids to private school. So, while the rest of us was damn suffering and poor. Okay? So, that money corrupts you know, uh, yeah, I really sure like two hundred dollars, two hundred dollar pairs of boots, man. Like nothing, like like me, like me going and buying a slice of pizza, man. That nigga would buy two hundred dollar pairs of boots, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you say, Alvin, man, brothers would be starving. And you say, you say that, um, and you say that Jermaine Grant was one of the men that um praised Masha as King David. Yeah, 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 he yeah, 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 when uh, Sean was there, Ryan was there, who else was there? Kakam was there, Kakam was there. Yeah, it's Zabawa. Zabawa? Yeah, Zabawa was there, but Arya wasn't there because Arya was ashamed. Arya knew what he was doing. Arya knew that he was in a close hand and, and tried to back him. He knew that. Yeah. And a lot of people were just like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're, so you're, so you're saying that... So, so um, everything was really based on cosine and time to document from way back. What year yeah. now? You're, no, like, you're, you're making it sound like it was way back in ninety, like ninety eight, ninety seven, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he was, he was being dropped. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, that's why they used to go around with a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff, and people used to report it, right? And they used to cover it, cover it up. They used to cover it up because he was a, the main man. Yeah, because that guy, that guy, he was very, he was, he was very complicated, uh, complicated spirit. He always had to be up front. That guy had a big ego, man. That guy had a big ego. And if you're not, if, 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 if you're not down with him, if you're not playing with him, one time the guy looked at me and said, yeah, you're a brother, but you're not my friend. Because, you know, you know, you're not in my circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah let, me, let me jump in on that. So, so I was going wow. through how the dude, how the dude was very, he was a very hard worker. But now looking back, you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty vision. Now you can see why he was so diligent when he was, because he knew he was going to do the takeover. So the nigga, what he did was um, he, he, he orchestrated taking over. First, he, he took over the junior council, okay? Then he took over security. Then he took over the treasury. Okay, that's another story with that treasury. He made sure that he had hey, hey, the treasury. Hey, hey, I want to go into that real fast because um, uh, right now, you know, it's, um, it's 15 minutes after, and we got some callers right now. I don't understand why nobody wants to call it right now. It's the hour of fire right now. You know what I'm saying? We light, we, we, we light niggas' ass up, and niggas ain't trying to light, you know what I mean? I'm like, come on, man. I'm, 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 seeing, all, I'm, I'm seeing all kind of numbers. Damn. I'm seeing all kind of area codes. Come on, man. This, this is Azaria and Aparium from, from, from the old school, lighting y'all niggas' ass up. I, 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 I want to go on to Rikash um, Yard real fast. You know Rikash Yard from GOCC? Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with him? Are you familiar with him? Are you familiar with him? Real, real quick, I'm trying to go down the line while the caller is on here. I see. I remember last time when we, when we first started talking about how petrified people were, people started hanging up and calling back and all of that. Like, 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 like the Holy Spirit came inside here, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure it out. So, so you know, call up. Uh, the number is um, what's the number? What's the number? What's the number? Five one six three eight seven one eight four six five one six three eight seven one eight four six. Um, press one. If I, if I could say this, brother, if I could get this real quick, you know, me and Aparm, um, we was disconnected for a long time when Aparm left. I didn't even know why they left or how they left. All I heard was that they was talking shit about him. Okay, just like you, you a witness to that, brother. You a witness because you heard them talking shit about Aparm. When he left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know that we, we're yeah. telling the truth. So, me and Aparam hooked up, we, we got back, uh, met up back again, reunited as brothers in Christ, brothers and, and friends. Um, and ever since we've been talking and doing little blog talks and, and, you know, debating with people and talking about people, no one wants to talk with us, bro. Nobody wants to talk with us, man. I noticed that. Aparam said, Aparam said, we done, we done debated with this rabbi, okay? This so-called rabbi. Harry, this Harry. Brother, Harry, Harry Rosenberg, okay? We done yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mason. That's what Mason. Yeah, we, we, Listen, we buried him in the ground, okay? We buried him with the scriptures, everything. Um, and he and he got the nerve to go debate Polite. We want a piece of Polite, too. Let's put that out. Hold on, 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 hold on. So you're saying that you guys debated um, Harry Rosenberg before Polite did? Yeah, we did. 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 We
You know, I mean, I'm happy for you. I'm so fucking right. We got so much information to be brought out, man. I don't even want to see that out of here, man. There's so much information out of here. Hey, 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 h
Willow the Brothers. Get rid of the brothers who was ready to make moves and, and, and do wow. stuff for the community and do stuff for, for brothers and sisters in the church and, and, and build up the church because you had a lot of good brothers in there. Just like a part wow. of you had a lot of good brothers, not just me. Yeah, 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 and yeah, I'm, yeah. Not trying to up, I'm not trying to big up myself like I'm good. The only one is good in heaven for y'all that want to try to find something to fuck me on. <laughs> Listen, we were some good brothers in there. Barack Brown, brothers like Mark. There were some good brothers in there. A lot, a lot. There were some good brothers in there. Okay? And, yeah. and what happened was it was a strategic move to move to alienate these brothers first, alienate them, vilify them, and then kick them out, put them out, and then destroy their character. And it's wow. just the pattern of what Jermaine does now. Whenever he, listen, he be putting people out left and right in his, in his organization. And what he does when yeah. he puts you out, if he puts you out forever, he vilifies you. I've seen him do it to you guys, Ram. I've seen him do it to you. I've seen him do it to, to the other brother, KLC. I've seen him do it. And listen, there's nothing wrong with y'all brothers, okay? But it was all part of the indoctrination of, oh, well, if you go against this, then you're an Antichrist. And when the Antichrist right. is sitting in front of you the whole time, that nigga's a yeah. Antichrist. He's an Antichrist. And that, that, that nigga's a damn devil. That nigga's a damn devil, man. Yeah, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, speak, I speak from experience, and you know, I, I, I ain't even reveal everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I speak from experience. That nigga, I, I'm not speaking from a point of view of fear, because there's one brother that can speak for me. His name is Um, I am a gun, also known as a regular name, Yeah, he could speak for me when I used to stand up against Dr. Dr. He was there. He used to be right there. Him, when I was there, when I was in council with Kumbun and Kumbun and um, and and, 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 and all the brothers. But that nigga, Dr. Dr. is a damn nigga, and uh, I'm just, I'm just bugged out about that Mormon thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just bugged out about it. Like, 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 yeah. Listen, anyone, who's listening, anyone, anyone who's listening right now that's loyal to Dr. Doctor, to your so-called comforter, um, let him know. He can't deny that Mormon book shit, okay? can't deny it. You got too many eyewitnesses. You got two eyewitnesses. The Lord said, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I saw you, I saw you, I saw you. Ram yeah. Total, we have, um, we have 530 on the line. All right. 530. Uh, really, brother, yeah. this is uh, Brother B.A. out of Sacramento, California, and I would just like to say, I'm, I'm, the, I'm into the Israelite movement, I've been following it for the last 10 years, I've always had a respect for the brothers, but just the info that you've been, you know, just you've been brought out tonight, very enlightening, I had no idea that this is some of the uh, activity that you guys are talking about went down, but one thing that really got my attention is about the Book of Mormon tactics, so uh, I just want to... I just want to know to, uh, the, the two brothers. I'm sorry, I don't know your names. Uh, but I want to ask: Do you know of any other than West Camps that still use that tactic to this day? Or that was just a one-time no, thing? No, no. no. I, I, like we said earlier, I think that was a one-time thing to uh, right. prove a point that uh, to manipulate and use it as a tactic to establish right. a priesthood. To establish right. a priesthood. Mm -hmm. But see, the Bible tells you there is no more priesthood. Okay, the order of Aaron is gone. It's gone. Yeah. Christ did away with that. The next priesthood that's going to be established is the order of Melchizedek. But that's not established yet on this earth. Christ is going to establish that. So, no one on this earth has the authority to establish that. Jesus Christ is the one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But the brother say he's been a part of the Israelite movement for over 10 years, and I congratulate him. I'm glad to hear that, brother. But I want to tell you, study the Bible and focus on the Bible, brother. Don't focus on man. I know, I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, but this is for the edification of everyone that's listening. And that's, that's what we're here to say, really. The whole purpose of this is not to focus on man. Do not man will fail you every time. The scriptures tell you, curse be the man that trusts in man and make his flesh his arm. Like Apollyon said, we've been warned already by God in the word not to trust in man. We already been warned. So as we get caught up, and then when you start to realize that, okay, this man has faults, this man is is is, is, is uh, flawed, you're supposed to step back now and realize that, man, I've been doing wrong, idolizing this man. Because this, this is something me and Apollyon discuss a lot. Israel has a weakness and a propensity for idolatry.
paid agents of Israel, the alphabet boys. Your brother Jacob is trying to walk you through the origins all the way up to the Negroes who are hustling our people out here right now. And next week, we'll go into a couple of these various camps, see the things that they are teaching, some of the outrageousness that's taking place. And I'm going to help you all understand that any Hebrew who stays up under the kneecaps of any of these crazy Negroes are going to get what they deserve. For they are truly people who have eyes that see it not and her ears that hear it not. That's the conclusion of our lesson. The paid agents of Israel, the alphabet boys, part one. Oh, yeah.